you have this now infamous moment at the Jimmy Kimmel, Joe Biden, Barack Obama fundraiser that happened over the last couple of days with what they've said, you know, as President uh, Biden essentially stalled out uh, on stage and had to be walked off the stage by President Obama. Uh, again, President Obama, you know, he's obviously not, he's one, he was one of our younger presidents, so he's not an old man now at this point either, but he's certainly not a young guy either, and he has to keep an eye out. Uh, he's in his 60s, keep his eye out. And, and pretty much grab President Biden by the arm uh, and walk him off stage in a very uncomfortable, you know, great grandfatherly kind of way. I mean, again, there is a point where you start feeling bad that they're doing this to him, too, because clearly he shouldn't be in this situation. Well, I think what they are doing is setting up a precedent for a change if they have to make one. So even by releasing that video, Logan, remember that that was a fundraising event with Jimmy Kimmel, right? I mean, that was, you know, 45-minute discussion. It wasn't like some big, long thing. But the fact that they keep releasing all of these videos, even in settings that aren't as public, usually we see these at speeches he's given, and the, the news is all there. You know, not like it. it's something they could potentially not have press at. Uh, but I feel like they're, it's, it's being done to him on purpose, because there's so many liberals who think he is the wrong candidate to go up against Donald Trump or any uh, in anybody in any race that he's just too old now and that he has these moments where maybe he does sound tough like I'll throw your phone across the fl- your floor but then he has moments where he's looking out at the crowd and he totally kind of seizes up I mean he freezes and you as you said Barack Obama isn't just like patting him on the back. Like, hey, you're my, you're my old vice president. It's great to see you. I mean, he is holding him up like you would a very elderly family member. And it, it was a, it, in a loving way, yes. in a sense. I mean, you can tell yeah. that they were very close, but not in a way that you would hope to have to hold up a guy running for another term right. as president of the United States. If he was about to finish out his term, we wouldn't be talking about this. Yeah. I wouldn't be making fun of the guy. And I'm not making fun. The idea is... I think he is being abused yeah. by his own people. I think it's like right. elderly abuse. I think that's right. It feels like elder abuse, but yeah, when he grabs him by the hand or by the wrist in a way that is like a again to steady somebody and to kind of get their attention of here's where we need to go, here's what we need to do, because he just stops. Again, I'm not making fun of anybody. I feel bad for him in that <laughs> sense. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, this it's, it goes this way and then slowly kind of walks him off stage uh, robotically. Uh, it's it's a weird spot to be in. Well, and also one of the things that is not getting covered about that event, which had a record breaking, they said $30 million fundraising event in Hollywood, in L.A., with George Clooney and Julia Roberts in attendance. A lot of high-powered Hollywood folks were there to help raise money for Joe Biden. But what was happening outside of the event? Uh, A protest of pro-Hamas, pro-Palestinian protesters that were protesting the sitting president of the United States and his policy towards Israel, which is really hard to define right now because it is at equal parts. He's bowing to the protesters and, and we're not seeing as much of it because college is out for the summer. So they're not camped out every day at universities across the country, but it's still happening when he goes to have what should have been a, a win for him with a $30 million fundraising, with with a lot of name power, a lot of earned media around that, what the two takeaways for me are, hundreds of people on the left protested you, and uh, the former president had to lead you off stage because you couldn't figure out quite what was going on. So it, the campaign has to be uh, reeling right now, trying to figure out what's going on. And they're even giving statements to the press that, uh, you know, Eric Schultz, Obama's senior advisor, said that this did not happen in reaction to the New York Post story about him freezing up. And the campaign even uh, took a shot at Rupert Murdoch and said, uh, Rupert Murdoch's sad little super PAC, the New York Post, is back to disrespecting its readers and itself by once again pretending the president taking in an applauding crowd for a few seconds is somehow wrong. They're gaslighting you. If you watch the video, he's not just taking in the crowd. President Obama grabs him by the wrist to lead him away. Yeah, to, to walk him off stage. To he, end it looks the event. like he doesn't know where he is. I mean, this is the problem. You could take in the crowd's... You know, applause. You know what you'd be doing if you were doing that? Waving at people, winking at some people, you know, maybe even uh, crouching down to talk to some people or shake some hands. 
He's not doing any of that, Logan. I mean, he he eventually just stalls out. Now, what's interesting is Will Case, one of our producers, just found out that on, on uh, June fifteenth, President uh, Biden has declared World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, just a couple of days ago, yeah. and I feel like his team, including his family, are allowing him to do this is exactly the definition, maybe the worst example we've ever seen this publicly of elder abuse because it's on camera and you see these moments in your, their face and their eyes and also his facial expressions, Logan, where it just goes. It goes blank. Yeah. I think that this is a, a, an interesting time for, for Democrats and for politicians in general. You see this sort of the traditional humanizing of a candidate. Those kind of things don't work when you have a candidate that's this age. You're putting him in. A, like you said, Jordan, they're releasing these videos. Also, they're putting him in situations that are no-win situations. Why that was even an on stage event uh, like that where there was even that moment of we're going to have to walk a significant amount of way. Like no one's th- they're either not thinking it through these low chairs. Yeah, they're either not thinking it through or they're doing it intentionally like you said to, to try to give that moment of well if something goes wrong we can say you know here's why we're being the good people by doing this. Yeah, I get if you were going to have an event with Barack Obama and a bunch of celebrities go ahead and do it because they want to come and see Barack Obama again. They'll give the money for, for Joe Biden. You can bring in Jimmy Kimmel to help host it, but you don't have to make it an event where you film it and you got, and you got, of course, people have their cameras and things like that. So it gets, things get out there. But uh, like you see, the chairs are low. These are two younger guys who are still on the top of their game, like Barack Obama and Jimmy Kimmel. And it just, it kind of makes Biden look that much older yeah. to be led away by a, he's having to be led away by a former president uh, from almost eight years ago. And I did want to go uh, back to this for a moment, Logan, because I, as I was thinking about it with Jonathan Katz, so you've got these traditional liberal journalists who were kind of on the periphery of this influencers event. And they go right up to uh, uh, President Biden while he's making the moves. They've all got their camera phones out. And they ask about, uh, you know, defunding Israel. And I know you're a typical press guy. You're grabbing me in front of this all this stuff. And I trust you as far as I throw your phone. I can have a good arm, man. Absolutely. I can throw a long way. But my point is this. Yes. I have made very clear to the Israelis what they have to do in the near term. If they don't, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And this is now what leftist journalists want to know. I mean, I think, again, that shows a change even in the United States. Not that they always loved Benjamin Netanyahu, not that they would always be the strongest supporters of Israel, but they weren't in support of what Hamas did. They weren't going to try and justify uh, what Hamas did on October 7th. They weren't going to try and justify Hezbollah starting a new conflict or other Islamic terror groups' actions. But now we've made this weird move, Logan, where they do. I mean, and it's like, again, it's a backdoor way of, of doing it, but they say, well, basically, the way they've been treated for so long, they it's no wonder they act this way. And so that's what President Biden is now having to deal with inside his own party. Right. You have an extreme left and, ex- and maybe a, a right wing that would be pro-Israel and extreme left that now is against Israel, including Jonathan M. Katz. So I said, this is the person who went up to him. Biden threatens to take his phone and throw it away for asking him or throw it across the room for asking him a question about Israel. Again, this is not someone who is a, a conservative or probably friendly to most of our causes. He's the one who went after Katie Britt during after her response uh, to the State of the Union. This is a, a guy who's very well known. Uh, and he was asking about what are you going to do to stop genocide? You know, this was, again, not necessarily on the side of, of pro-Israel at that point. But what happens is, you know, as it does seem to happen with President Biden, and then we saw it again uh, in that speech, I know we're going to play a clip from that as well, uh, things seem to backfire. Even when put under a, uh, a situation where you think, okay, this can be a bunch of friendly people, they're going to come up to us, it's going to be fine.